Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. He's Bernard. And he's Red. Um, so episode two, My Little Pony. We're going to focus a little bit less on the plot and a little bit more on what we think. So let's just go over the plot in brief. Basically, there's... Trial, 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 yeah, trial, five, trial, sum up. The five trials and then the uh, climax. First trial was... Applejack? Yes, Applejack being an ass. <laughs> this moment's so dumb. Like, I love this. I, like, I love this episode. I love this show. But goddamn, is this moment dumb. So to sum it up, basically what happens is Luna knocks down a cliff... Um, and Twilight's about to fall off, Applejack comes to help her, and Applejack basically says, Just let go, you'll be okay. You know what she should have said? Just let go, there's two packets I waiting to catch you. Boom! It's... It's so dumb! Or even the two packets I could have said something. Yeah, like... Why did they have to wait below her? Couldn't they just, like, fly up next to her? Yeah, that moment is just full of dumbness. It... And it, it, the thing is, it doesn't really represent honesty. It doesn't represent honesty that well, I feel. You know, yes, Applejack was speaking the truth, but it's not like it was hard to speak the truth. Yeah, this brings up a qualm I had, I think, when we first watched the show some time ago. Applejack should not be the uh, element of honesty, she should be the honesty, I mean, the element of trust. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense, and it actually has a lot more ways to show off than honesty. Yeah. But if they really wanted to stick with honesty, what they should have done, and I don't know how they would have done this, is find some way to make telling the truth painful, to make it difficult, to make it something where you're tempted to lie. Well, they did that later with Discord, but again, yeah. it would have just been a lot easier to make her truth. So overall, that moment's dumb, and you should feel bad, writers. I would not shame you because I know how hard it is to write. Okay, you sh Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So that moment was dumb, but the show is overall written, so feel bad about that one scene and improve in the future, which I believe you have. Then every but, scene with Sweetie Belle. Yeah, but overall, you know, you're doing a good job. Uh, second scene is much better with Fluttershy and the Manticore. So basically, the Manticore goes drrr, r, and everybody and every pony is like pshu, pshu, ba, bu, bu, da. Rarity frontline warrior. Yeah, she's pretty badass. But eventually, Fluttershy is all noo, and is super kind and compassionate to him. And they find out there's a thorn stuck in spawn, and she takes it out. And this was an excellent way to do it because. You basically have someone willing to risk their life just to see someone who's in pain be in less pain. That's damn good. Like, that's just awesome. It shows what kind of person Fluttershy is. And I feel like all the other ponies would have done that had they known, but they didn't know. And so they see Big Scary and they immediately react strongly to that, whereas Fluttershy is able to see past that. Um, then there's another kind of dumb scene with the trees. They're fucking trees, you guys. They just... Well, Bernard actually had an excellent point when we were watching it. Yeah, the trees have humanoid faces. There is no such thing as a human within the MLP world. That is the scariest thing, Uncanny Valley aside. I mean... Yeah. If you see a face of a creature that has never existed in your world, that is... That, that, that's, that's that is the stuff Nightmare is made of, yes. Do monkeys exist in MLP? Yes. Wait, do they? I don't know. I Well, we know that monkey thing from the, um... Book of Daring Do does. Does that count? Yeah, but he's like a creature of myth. Oh, but no, he's real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess monkeys do exist. But either way, it's a very uncommon creature, and it's... So, I guess they have reason to be scared, but Pinkie Pie just laughs it off, and... <laughs> and she sings a song. Yes. <laughs> and, and I, all, they, they and I love how they're right. lampshaded. Like, Twilight's like, is she really singing a song? And we're just, she is. <laughs> and it makes sense in character. That's the best part. It makes sense for Pinkie Pie to start singing a song out of the blue. It makes perfect sense. She's a musician. She loves music. She loves to live in life. And <laughs> I actually thought it would be funnier if she just gave uh, Theodore Roosevelt or something fear but fear itself speech. Yeah, that would have been pretty great too. <laughs> yeah, but There's nothing to fear but fear itself. Screw the Nazis. But overall, it's just. It's a, it's a moment, that, it's kind of dumb, but it's a moment that makes a lot of sense, and it's absolutely goddamn hilarious, so that, so that is totally fine. Um, then, there's Rarity's moment, where we have a giant sea serpent who had his mustache cut off. Well, a giant river serpent. Giant river serpent. Um, so Rarity bites one of his scales out, painfully, chops her own tail off with, like, and... Yeah, that's kind of a... I won't go into detail about that. that yeah, that's, that's just, like, a, oppositioning. Yeah, it's like... Okay, enough of that. Um, so anyway... Actually... Good analog. I think he just broke <laughs> his neck. Um, anyway... 
So... <laughs> yeah, she has a burger next to do it. <laughs> so she cuts her tail off and uses it to fix his mustache. Um, this is another good scene, because it's giving up something Rarity really cares about. She cares about her appearance, she cares about what she looks like, and her tail's a big part of that. But she's willing to give it up to help this guy. Yes, uh, I, that guy is actually very nice because that was a shitty mustache. Yeah, and I'm, and I mean, they could have just explained it'll grow back, but no, but she was willing to do this for someone. That's a very good representation of generosity. And then Rainbow Dash, her little trial, is, well, first off, they come to a bridge that's out and it's like, no, whatever will we do? And then Rainbow Dash is just, bitch, I got wings. Yeah. Which I like because I guarantee you in some other shows, they would be stymied by that and that would just be dumb. Or just Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Well, let's not bring up the eagle. Yeah. Um, fly, you <laughs> fools! <laughs> he told you right there! Um, so anyway, so uh, Rainbow Dash flies across, but it's then greeted by the Shadow Bones. Who will meet again in a, again, third Equestrian Girls movie. They are used as a team name. The Shadow Bolts are basically like, Bitch, we want you as captain, and we're going to be the best flyers ever, and you're the best flyer ever. And Rainbow Dash is super tempted, but when they say it's us or them, um, Rarity, Rarity, Rainbow, Rainbow Dash chooses them. Because they're her friends, and they need to trust in her. And here comes the most glorious plot point of the entire thing. Why did Luna just murder them? We know it's a kid show, but seriously. Like, yeah. you, you climbed a fucking mountain. Just do it on top of them. So, let's just go over the climax real quick. Basically, they go in, they find the elements, yada yada. Um, the elements are revealed to be inside their souls the entire time. The alimony was in your heart all along. And... Cel Celestia shows up. Yeah, Celestia shows up. Maybe she was prisoned. Maybe, more likely, she was just taking a nap in the sun. She was something. on the seven loving drink of Slurpee. Yeah. Um, and then sh she forgives Luna. Luna's like, oh, big sister. And everybody's happy. Here's my take on the episode. First off, it was good. I liked it. It made me laugh. But I think Celestia and Luna were in cahoots the whole time. I think Celestia has been visiting Luna on the moon, and they've been figuring out what to do, and this was all just a test for Twilight. It was basically a test to see whether or not she can make friends, and a way to kind of get her out of her shell. Which is incredibly trollish, but also kind of nice. A step that took a thousand years. I, I don't think it took a thousand years. I think they just figured this out. It's like, well, I'm going to be coming out anyway. Instead of just coming back and saying, hey, I'm better now, why don't we do something fun with it? But I guess that would explain why those stars just suddenly decided to let her free. Yeah, it would, it would also explain, like, why all the trials were so non-lethal. Like, oh, Collapsing Cliff, when y you have two Pegasi with you. The Manticore, okay, could have been dangerous, but changing the faces on trees, cutting off a guy's mustache, like, just temptation, none of that stuff was all that dangerous. She could have very easily bitch-smacked them six ways from Sunday into a grave, but she didn't. So, that just shows that even deep down, Luda's not a... Well, she actually never was a horrible person. She just felt unappreciated. Yeah, and actually, this, there's also nothing, because Nightmare Moon is its own entity, right? I believe they have a... Actually, I don't think they ever explained if Nightmare Moon is its own entity, or just, like, Luna's overwhelming emotion just turned her into something else. Uh, let's assume Nightmare Moon is a real entity for a moment here. What I think this show, what this could also show, is Luna is holding Nightmare Moon back. Like, Nightmare Moon is trying to be evil, is trying to kill these people, is trying to do everything, but Luna's able to hold it back and kind of channel it into just plain old dickishness. Overall, though, um, let us know your own personal pet theories about what this episode means, Luna and Celestia and all that. Yep, six uh, seasons in. Yep. Yeah. See y'all <laughs> later. Uh, well, actually, let me think. Did we actually cover everything? I think so. Yeah, because how long does it be? I've never got to try to actually not just do plot summary. Uh, nine minutes long. That's good enough. <laughs> all right. Alright, now that you've had some behind-the-scenes action, because we're so excited behind-the-scenes, bye. Bye.